Salutations, friends. It is me, said Stevie. And today, I got a question for you. Is it pronounced integral or is it pronounced integral? I've heard it both ways, and I don't know which one is right. But uh, I gotta say, it's easier for my mush mouth to say integral than it is to say integral. Integral? Integral. I have to think about it, and then it doesn't sound right. So, I'm going with integral. What do you guys say? I've heard it pronounced both ways, like I said. I even looked it up, and it can be pronounced both ways. Both are right. Again, y'all know me. I can barely speak uh, half the time, and so integral is what it's going to be here on out. But, so, uh, I have two integrals in front of me today. Couple weeks back, uh, E and G let me check out uh, a bunch of his knives. One of them was this, uh, the James brand, the Barnes uh, Integral, and I brought it over to Steve Clare's house when I was uh, hanging with him, uh, looking at knives. And he's like, "Well, hey, have you checked out the Vero Isotope?" And I know I handled it a couple times at uh, the different blade shows, but never really spent much time with it. So I was like, wow, uh, why not uh, check them both out uh, right around the same time and do a little comparison? So uh, for those of you that might not know, uh, the big difference between an integral and a standard knife is these are milled from one solid uh, chunk of titanium uh, in this case. You can see there, there's no seam. There's no uh, two-piece uh, handle construction. They are both, um, you know, there's no backspacer. That's These aren't backspacers. These are just one solid piece. Now, when it comes to taking these apart, I have zero experience with those. Uh, I, I kind of, I think I've seen a couple being taken apart. You, you know, you got to kind of just fit everything back together perfectly, um, which kind of, I think, makes that a pain in the ass. Uh, personally, with as much as I like to disassemble knives, and although I'm sure both of these dudes wouldn't mind if I took them apart, I'm not going to. I don't want to risk messing them up. But uh, I had spent a little bit more time with this one prior to getting in uh, this one, uh, the James brand. Uh, the Barnes, uh, this is a knife that made me realize I, I don't have my pulse on the finger of the knife industry. I thought I knew what the James brand was, and after checking it out a little bit more, uh, I definitely don't. I was not familiar with the James brand. Uh, I thought that they were a U.S. Uh, production company, and they're not. They're kind of more of a marketing company company that happens to sell some knives as well. They got all sorts of stuff for sale. Uh, that being said, with Vero, very, very familiar with Vero. I've had the Isotope uh, for in uh, for review. Uh, or no, I own the Isotope. I sold it. I had both the Synapse and the Synapse XL. I sold both of those. Uh, I have uh, here the Vero Axon, just happens to be sitting to my direct uh, right, because it's never far by. I've had the frame lock and the liner lock. I've sold them all, and the only Vero I have is the uh, liner lock uh, Axon. You've heard me rant and rave about this. One of my all-time favorite knives. But I'm very familiar with Vero and uh, Joseph Vero and his design language and his interactions with the community. Uh, I've met him a couple times. Cool dude. So, uh, that's not going to make too much of a difference in, uh, so these aren't going to really be reviews. These are just going to be kind of more of a comparison and, uh, my thoughts on, um, them both. Uh, first thing right off the bat is integrals are definitely much more expensive than a standard, uh, construction knife. I'm assuming that's because of the machine time that it takes to mill out one solid piece of titanium as it does to two individuals. So 
Uh, that being said, currently the James brand, the Barnes, is going for six hundred and forty nine dollars. And uh, there's a couple of different uh, flavors that you can get, different uh, handled colors, different thumb studs. Uh, then there's also uh, the Vero Isotope here, which is the base price is four ninety five, I believe. And you can also get them in a couple different flavors. Uh, so this one is the stone washed with uh, stone washed handles with or handle with a end cut carbon fiber uh, inlay. This one is the black micro milled uh, pattern uh, with all uh, gray uh, stone washed hardware. And I gotta say, uh, as much as I love the end cut carbon fiber here, uh, aesthetics wise. This milling is ridiculous. I really, really, really like this. And uh, the rounded corners of it, uh, the integrated pocket, we'll, we'll go over a little bit more here, but the, uh, the rounded corners and the attention to detail on this are pretty awesome. The OEM on this is Riot. Uh, the OEM on the Vero is Bestech. Uh, not that they didn't do good attention to detail. Uh, I think this is supposed to be a little bit more angular, just that's Vero's design language. Everything is knocked down really well. Um, the fit and finish are good. Uh, quick specs. Uh, so you're looking at thumb stud for deployment only on uh, this, uh, the James brand, the Barnes. Uh, I can middle finger flick it, no problem. Uh, you're looking at a uh, M390 blade, uh, the stonewash kind of satin uh, finish on, I'm not quite sure what blade style that is. Is it a drop point? Uh, I, I'm going to call it a drop point, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but that is a 3.5 inch blade, an overall length of 7.8, which makes the handle a little over 4 inches. I get a really good uh, grip on this, no problem. Uh, let's see here. Uh, no badging or anything on the show side. That's a T6 pivot, which I find odd. Uh, moving around, you do have a reversible, or excuse me, a non-reversible uh, deep carry uh, pocket clip with the James brand logo on it. And then you see the James brand uh, name on uh, the show side blade here. Uh, I believe that that was a T8. And uh, you see no clip screw in there. Uh, that's because uh, I think that this is kind of cool. Let me see if I can turn on my light here. Yes, I can. Turn on, that's nah, not gonna do much for me. Uh, but you can see internally, the clip screw in there and then it's got kind of like this uh rainbow hue to the inside there uh no internal milling that i can see uh, it is a little heavy but i do like the way they did that uh, clip screw i did back it out just to uh, see how it uh, worked and it came out very easy it did actually scare me a little bit because i assumed that it was titanium uh, on the hardware, it's not. And I thought I lost the screw and I was freaking out. I was starting to figure out how I could get one. Uh, I didn't want to have to tell Ian that I lost his pocket clip screw. Uh, and then after all the freaking out, I found that it was actually uh, stuck to the end of my, uh, it had fallen and was kind of hidden on my bit driver. Means it's magnetic, which means it's not uh, titanium. But uh, this is writing on ceramic uh, bearings. It came uh, centered. I don't know how much Ian has messed with this or played with it, but uh, the action on it is really good. Uh, the thumb, th you got to really get up under this thumb stud, at least I do, to deploy it. But it's a very, uh, it's, a, it's a heavy detent. Very snappy. Uh, frame lock, if I didn't mention that. Uh, drops to the nail shake shut the action on it is good i find myself wanting to middle finger flick it more just because i do have a problem 
uh, I just got to put more thought and more effort into it uh, to deploy it with the, uh, the, the thumb stud. And it does kind of chew up my thumb a little bit. So uh, I've really been middle finger flicking it more. Now on to the isotope. Uh, this is a much, much larger knife. Uh, but let's see here. You are looking at uh, M390 on the blade steel again. Uh, kind of this clip point style blade. Uh, this is the belt satin finish on there. Uh, captive show side pivot. You see that end cut mar I was going to say marbled carbon fiber, and I can't really pronounce that either. Uh, end cut carbon fiber, which just turns out really nice. Uh, minimal, uh, just one onlay body screw on there. I'm just trying to turn off my light since I don't need it anymore. Uh, moving around to the back side, no uh, reversible pocket clip on this either, and you do see one uh, pocket clip screw. Uh, frame lock as well. They both have uh, lock bar inserts, uh, T8 on the hardware. And then you see the V-Box, uh, I think that's what they call it, milled into the clip side. Uh, if I didn't mention uh, the specs on this, though, that is a 3.9-inch blade. You have an overall length of 8.8-inch, uh, so well over a 4-inch uh, uh, handle on that. Uh, not choked up, you see the uh, big old grip that I get on that. And then because of the way the flipper tab is designed, uh, it ends up being hidden. So you don't, uh, you don't, the, your flipper tab's not in the way and you can choke up on it. Uh, I didn't mention this, uh, but I meant to. There is some jimping on here. And as comfortable as this is, no choil. Sorry, I'm moving around here a little bit. Uh, no no real way to choke up on there. Um, but that jimping is absolutely pointless. It's for show. It doesn't give me any extra grip at all. It may as well not be there. Um, so there's that. Whereas the uh, jimping on here, uh, very minimalist, but it is actually grippy. And you can use it. And uh, no choil, but I can ride up onto this flat. And then the way that this is designed, uh, I can actually kind of get the, my fat stubby finger uh, in there. And this becomes extremely comfortable in the choked up uh, position. Uh, even back here, though, I got no uh, problems uh, with it. Again, my the pad of my thumb lands on that jimping. And uh, push farther for forward, it doesn't do uh, me much better or do me really any good. But I gotta say, uh, this is a very comfortable knife. I don't have any hot spots. Uh, backing up uh, real quick, uh, I've meant to mention this also, uh, forgot to. Um, although no immediate hot spots, um, I do kind of get like, I, I get this pinchy uh, feeling when I wanna bear down onto it. Um, right in this area here, wants to pinch the the, the pad of my uh, finger there and it doesn't feel real good. That's if I'm bearing down on it. Um, I, it, it's not comfortable for my index finger at all. I, um, it's not comfortable. Now, if I'm, you know, just a normal grip where I'm not having to really bear down on it, not a problem, but in any position on the isotope, I don't have that. So, uh, I gotta say, uh, in regards to ergos, um, although I like the, uh, the smaller handle and the smaller profile of the Barnes, ergos wise, uh, the isotope wins. Uh, I should also, uh, point out that, uh, Steve Claire pointed this out. Uh, this is number three. Will that focus? You see that? This is isotope number three. So this is an early uh, production. I didn't talk about the uh, how th this is also writing on ceramic bearings. Again, sorry, folks. I am jumping all over here. I feel a little rushed uh, today because uh, I do have an afternoon appointment that I don't want to be late for. And this video could take forever. <laughs> um, so sorry about that if I'm skipping all over the place. But uh, it definitely feels uh, really good on the clothes. This one was centered completely. 
And then uh, you do have the Vero slot there, so I can middle finger flick that, no problem. Uh, the flipper tab, um, I kind of... Uh, I've slipped off a couple times, but for the most part, I think it's okay. I'd like to see that jimping just go down a little bit more, but uh, the, the detent is, like on most Veros that I've handled, it's a little on the light side for sure. Uh, it's definitely not as snappy as the Barnes is, but it's not a problem. Now, one thing I haven't tried that I've been able to do with all Veros, and I can't really do this on screen, is can I shake it open? Nope. Oh, yes, I just did. So uh, what I was trying to do is, you know, I'll end up smashing my camera. But I can, uh, well, I did it once. I know I'd be able to do it again. So, and I don't know if that correlates with light detent or not, but uh, definitely um, on the little bit lighter side, but that doesn't bother me none. Uh, the detent seems good to go. Um, I can't, well, I was just going to say I can't really fail it, uh, and then I failed it uh, first try. But for the way I deploy a knife, I have to really try to fail it. I have to be lazy with it, and then I can fail it. Whereas the... Uh, the Barnes, there's no failing this thing. Now, again, it's a little bit harder for me with the thumb stud, but this thing doesn't fail at all. The detent is super, super snappy. I think uh, the detent on the Barnes, the James brand, the Barnes, and it is the Barnes. So it's the James brand, the Barnes. Uh, the detent uh, wins in that, and I'm not keeping score or anything here. But, uh, that is, I'll give the win, uh, uh, to the detent on the James brand as opposed to, uh, Vero. Now, one of the things that I've always heard about Vero that I just don't experience is the carryability of them due to the pocket clip. Now, uh, the pocket clip on the... Uh, Axon liner lock is damn near uh, the same as the, is or the isotope here, and they're all pretty much the same. Uh, I'm just going to show it off here because I wanted to show people uh, my experience. So I wear uh, 511 or uh, Vertex uh, jeans, uh, and they have this. The reason why I'm able to carry so much stuff is. On both sides, in addition to just the uh, fifth pocket and your front pocket and your back pocket, they got these extra utility um, pockets or mag pouches. They're really meant to fit an extra uh, like AR mag or any sort of mag in there. And this is where I carry my knives. And they got one on the, uh, the other side as well. And that's where I carry my flashlight and pen. But I've, I always hear people talking about how uh, it's hard for these to go, a Vero to go in and out of pocket. I don't experience that. It goes right in and it pulls right out and it goes right in and look at it's even writing over the that extra bit of material there and I do realize that it's tight it looks like it and I I don't not believe people that they have problems getting it in and out. I, it's just I guess maybe the way these pants are designed I don't have that problem. It goes in and out of pocket just fine. Uh, same with the uh, Axon. And that's been the same with my, uh, the Synapse. I had the Synapse XL and the, uh, the regular Synapse. I've never had a problem with my Vero clips. Um, that being said, uh, the clip on uh, the Barnes is also really good to go. Uh, it goes in and out of pocket just fine. You can see they've, uh, they have the kind of that pad there so you're not getting... Uh, texturing the whole way uh, so it won't really rip up your jeans uh, all that much but uh, you can see his carry uh, profile uh, they're both not super deep carry but they're fairly deep carry um, and I got no problem with the way either of these have carried so uh, but I just really wanted to point that out that's my experience again this is the jeans that I wear I don't really wear any other style jeans. I got three or four different pairs of the 511s. I got three or four pairs of the Vertex. 
and they all carry uh, all my knives carry exactly the same. So uh, know that that's my experience with the clip. Um, I haven't really carried these a whole bunch just because, again, they're not mine, and I don't really want to risk, um, uh, you know, marring them up or anything. Uh, as far as uh, the cutting uh, a, a profile goes, uh, let's see your cutting profile. I don't even know what that means. Um, the uh, the way they cut. Uh, let's just say that. So I have. I just I'm looking around. I got a. Uh, envelope uh here uh both m390 both have a uh, full flat grind um this one is cutting through a couple layers no problem and this one eh, well well i don't know uh so again i don't know what ian has done to this if this is a factory edge or not i don't know how much steve has uh carried this but it's definitely this Vero is not as slicey, so I don't I don't know what that's all about. Um, well, there you go. Maybe it's just me, but it definitely seems like, uh, at least for comparison today wise, the Barnes uh, wins in that. Uh, maybe this just needs to be tuned up a little bit. But they're both M three ninety again. Both. Um, uh, flat grinds. So, uh, so this doesn't uh, go on too much longer. I think I covered pretty much everything. Uh, pricing again, uh, six. Uh, so this is, as I'm looking them up today, uh, you see uh, the James brand. 649 for that variant, and it does appear to be in stock. Whereas the uh, Vero, you can see uh, $4.99 for the different uh, options here. Uh, it's coming soon. It's currently out of stock. But, uh, and it looks like the, uh, it, although it's not highlighted, uh, you can see the black end cut carbon fiber is $4.95. So uh, there's a, <clears throat> what am I going through puberty now? Uh, my voice just cracked. Uh, there's a considerable price difference here, and I don't know why that is. Um, maybe it's because the of all the micro milling that goes into this. This is absolutely gorgeous, and again, the, the rounded corners and uh, just the way it feels in hand. Uh, Ria did an exceptional job on this, and I really, really, really like uh, this knife. Uh, 495 um, is much more palatable, and I think I like Vero more than uh, James Brand, just with my experience. Uh, I would love to see. So this is a really big knife, and I really, I really dig it. But I don't need uh, if I'm going to get an integral, uh, and we'll I'll touch on if I'm going to uh, at the end of this or not. If I was going to have an Integral, I don't need one. I don't need a knife this big. For big knives, I have Gungnir. And uh, that's the only real big knife I keep in my collection. Uh, I don't need a knife this big. I would love to see a Isotope in this uh, size. Uh, three and a half inch blade, four inch, as opposed to like four point whatever and a 4.9 inch blade. I just, I don't need this big of a knife. I do get a lot of control over it, but I just, I'm not, I would not carry this knife as an EDC knife. It's just, I, I don't need that. If I'm going to need a, and again, if I'm going to need a big knife, uh, I have Gungnir, and this ain't, uh, I do not prefer this to Gungnir at all. Uh, but, so that brings me back to which one would I purchase? Uh, based on price, uh, I would pick up the Vero. Uh, I kind of like all the uh, points that I covered a little bit more. I do think that this is a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, and I do like the fit and finish a little bit more, but uh, that thumb just gets me, and then that leaves me to a middle finger flick only uh, for opening. Uh, 
Uh, whereas I like having, I, I want to have a flipper of some sort on my knives. Um, I've gone back and forth after a while and I do want just, I, I want a couple of options. I don't care if it's a thumb stud or a slot, but, uh, I want a flipper and I like the way that Vero does their flippers. So if I was going to uh, have to pick between the two and really price wasn't even an option, I would still get uh, the isotope, the Vero Engineering isotope over uh, the Barnes from the James brand. Uh, but I do really like the looks of this knife a lot better. I, that micro milling, that knurled, uh, knurled, why did I have to stretch that out? Uh, see guys? And gals, uh, I'm a mush mouth. Uh, I just really, really dig that knurling uh, on there. And again, just the, the overall uh, look of it. I do not like that uh, hot spot that I get there. And then that jimping is just pointless. It doesn't do anything at all. Uh, but yeah, if this was more this size, I'd be all over it. Uh, that being said... Uh, for these two integrals, uh, four ninety five for the isotope, six forty nine for the James brand. These are both a hard, hard pass for me. I have zero interest in adding one of these to my collection. If I was going to add an integral, uh, so. I did have a little bit of experience with an Integral. Uh, Stabby Stokes had sent me her Wii Pleroma, uh, an Isham design. That's just a little bitty guy. And uh, still, that that's like 275 or something. Um, I would get something more like that. Uh, it's a little bit more palatable. And I, I, I want another Isham as opposed to another Vero or a uh, this company, the James brand. Um but uh, I do not have the need or the want to have a Integral in my collection. So uh, these are both hard passes for me uh, personally. Uh, not interested in picking up either one of these. I can recommend them both. Uh, if you're in the market for an Integral and you're looking at one or the other, Take everything I just said into consideration. I will recommend the Vero uh, based on my hand sizes uh, a little bit more. I just think that uh, I think that you get a little bit more of a knife, uh, not just materials wise, but um, functionality. I think you get a little bit more uh, if you're looking for a higher end feeling and you know a little bit more refinement. The James brand, the Barnes, uh, might be uh, your flavor. But, uh, yeah, so that's what I got for you today. Uh, I hope this video made some sense. Uh, it's kind of hard to make this a short video. I thought I could breeze through it, but I think it'll end up being well over a half hour. Um, maybe. I don't know. But there you go, folks. Let me know what you think. Uh, I didn't, I don't think I said it, uh, off the top, uh, but please, uh, if you haven't, uh, given the video a like already, uh, do that. Uh, it really helps if you're going to watch a video to give it a like, uh, if you do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, you can do so right there conveniently. And then I'm not sure what that video will be, but if you haven't checked out that video, uh, you can watch that and give that a like. And until the next one, I bid you mofos a deuces.